welcome. So this is our first series, uh, an exposed set of series that we have done like this. All again, kind of based on this idea of what else can my communication device do? There's a lot of interest in this, so I am certain that this is going to be uh, viewed multiple times, multiple times over on um, on uh, YouTube. So, for to get started, Annie is going to give us some information and show us some amazing videos. And um, so at that time, you guys may want to go ahead and mute during that period. And then once we get done, then we'll all get back together and talk again. If you do have something that you want to say, please share. So let's talk about this. So our goals and format for today, again, Annie and I have zero we are not going to stand in a soapbox and say that we know how to do this and how to make art uh, in this way, because we don't. Um, we are here as moderators. In this format that we're using today, we also hope to use it as well, kind of going forwards with our other topics that we had regarding beyond communication. If you guys recall, those included things like music, Obviously, we're doing art today, environmental controls, driving, um, and uh, and caregiver alerting. So we're, we would love your feedback on how this works today and how you guys might like to see things different as we go forward. But we're here to share knowledge. And the biggest thing is we're here to give you tools and resource to get started creating art. But if you do, I shouldn't say if, when you do create art, we would love it if you would share with us as, and we can share with the other group too what you have done or uh, created. So again, please feel free to tell us if you have questions, if you have input, if you have ideas, love to hear it. Again, microphone, cameras on, microphones on when we get to that portion or again, anytime you have a question. Um, also, too, feel free to have your chat ready. And if you have any questions about how to access your chat, um, we actually have the instructions here on the screen. And you could reach out in a in the um, you can reach out and let us know as well um, if you need help with any of that um, by just even turning off on your I should say turning on your microphone if it's off and just saying, hey, I need help. Like, let us know. We're happy to help with that. All right, Miss Annie. Annie's in control today. All right, great. <clears throat> Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. Um, like Trinity said, we are not the experts, um, but we're bringing together some amazing eye gaze artists, some resources, and hopefully can get you started after this. Um, so two things that I wanted to first point out is just general resources. We mentioned this in our last training, but the eye gaze artists Facebook group is an amazing source of knowledge. Um, it's moderated by an artist in the UK who has ALS and also many participants do and people are constantly sharing their art giving tips on how they created their art answering each other's questions about how to do certain things or what programs they have been trialing so it's really an amazing um, amazing place to be and so the link is here and Trinity will also put it in the chat um, as well. The other tip that I wanted to, to point out is just so um, this may be an obvious one, but every art program has its own unique features and settings. So don't discount looking at the program's tutorials and training materials so that you can learn about the settings that are unique to that program before you try to layer eye tracking into that. So just, the, just a reminder that those training uh, materials related to the specific program are a great uh, way to base your knowledge. Um, I wanted to bring up our next really exciting resource that's coming out um, from the ALS Association in Minnesota, South Dakota, North Dakota, Iowa, and Wisconsin. So we have a guest speaker joining us today, and I'm going to turn it over to Liz Stanley uh, so she can explain a little bit more about this program. So I... 
I think um, Corey is on with us and I'm going to let Corey start and then I'm going to join in in a second. But thank you so much, Amy. No problem. <laughs> Yeah, um, so thank you guys for letting me hop on. Um, I was kind of one of the founders of this program, along with Ken Baltus that you are seeing here on the screen. So um, Ken Baltus, is, he was diagnosed with, a, uh, with ALS and was a retired artist. Um, unfortunately, Ken passed away in 2022. But his dream was really to start an arts program for individuals living with ALS. Um, and since he lived in Minnesota, we decided to start this small within our area. So we have the five states. Um, and he really just saw the value in people being able to continue their art throughout the progression of the ALS diagnosis. And so we developed this program, which was just launched this year. We've actually only had one uh, actual event so far. Um, and I'm going to let Liz get into a little bit more about what types of courses we're going to be offering. Um, so currently, this is, like Annie said, offered in Minnesota, South Dakota, North Dakota, Iowa, and Wisconsin, um, because we have one person, Liz, that you'll hear from that is running this program. Um, but this has taken national recognition as well as international recognition, which is pretty exciting. We have um, been partnering with some people on the international front as well. And so this is kind of being looked at closely both through our National ALS Association as well as internationally to potentially expand this program um, to a wider audience. So hopefully we'll be able to offer that in the future. Um, yeah, it, I think that's kind of the gist of it. Liz is going to go into a little bit about what she's done as far as kicking this program off since she has started and what we're looking at offering. Thanks, Corey. Um, yeah, and I just want to point out that my email address is there. Um, Trinity, I believe, put the link to the website and maybe Trinity will put the um my email address in the chat as well. There it is. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and show you um, the website that we have so far. So right now you'll see, like you saw before, um, information about Ken and um, some images of his artwork, and then a little bit about me as well. And at the bottom, um, is where you will see all of our upcoming events and classes. And so if you're- Hold on just a second, Liz, we're only seeing Annie. Annie, go ahead and stop share. Uh -oh. There you go. <laughs> Can you see it now or do I have to do something? Nope, you got it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let me go back. <laughs> so here, as you saw before, it was the, the picture of Ken and information about him and how he created the program, and then a little information about me. And then at the bottom, we have the um, events and classes that are coming up. So you can see we we have the Walker Art Center tour, and um, we have some in-person classes like the water media painting um, coming up, as well as several online opportunities. We have mobile device photography. We also have digital art. Uh, which is the main reason why I'm here. I really want to learn um, uh, more about all the options for digital art. And so I'm excited for this uh, opportunity today. And then uh, we have some writing um, courses, music and comedy are some of the other offerings that we'll have. So just to give you an idea of some things that we have right now. Um, most of this is starting in September because, like Corey said, this is brand new. Um, so, yeah, we're really hoping to expand this program even more and be able to offer and, and reach um, even more folks across the nation eventually. Um, so stay tuned for more information on that. Um, and like I said, feel free to reach out if you have any questions about the program. Thank you, Trinity and Ann or Ann. Absolutely. All right, Liz, you want to stop your share and then Annie, you can take over. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Liz and Corey. Um, and yes, everyone feel free to shoot them an email to follow that program and see how it develops. The next 
piece that we want to talk about is so now we want to get into the meat of some of the programs that people can use for digital art. Uh, we first wanted to highlight that maybe art is new to you or you just want something simple to explore. So this is these are some great resources for you. So the Magic Eye Effects program by Sensory Guru and the Look Lab software by Smartbox are two softwares that are designed for eye tracking. Um, you can download them through their websites and trial them. It's a great way to explore the activities and just to kind of dip your toes into the water there. Another really fun, uh, simple resource is the jacksonpollock.org website. Um, and that is a really cool um, online painting tool that's really simple and really fun. So. These are good good introductory tools um, that don't require high level eye tracking. Um, so good good way to build skills. Um, on to the next here, we wanted to highlight. Oh, I'm sorry, come back. Wanted to highlight some of the digital art programs that we found that people are using most often. Um, we've broken them down by um, by platform. So um, on the first side, you'll see what programs people are often using in Windows. ArtRage has really come up as a really popular tool and we will see in one of our artist spotlights how one of our um, iCase artists uses ArtRage. Um, you'll see a list there of other programs as well. On iOS, there's also the ArtRage app and then ArtSet is another program that artists are using and we'll get to see how that looks today too. And then on the very end, we have our web-based programs, again, the jacksonpollock.org. And a lot of artists are using AI, which is so cool to see and a really great way to explore art. Um, and this, again, is web-based. Here's a list of some programs that people are using. They're often free to use initially, too, so you can try different programs out, try the different features, um, and see what you like. So uh, here's a Let's get into our artist. Um, we have three, ooh, my, I'm a little skip happy today. Sorry about that. We have three amazing artists who have shared their work with us. Um, I'm so excited to highlight this work from Amy Thornburg, Scott. Craig and Stacey Vota. Um, they are fantastic and they all have their unique styles and a huge, huge thank you to them for sharing with us today. Um, so first I'm going to bring up Amy Thornburg who I think is on the call with us. Thank you, Amy, for joining. Um, Amy was wonderful and wrote out her top five tips for art. Um, her first tip is to have fun. You can't do art wrong. I love this. Like, Don't take it too seriously. Just get in there and get started. Her second tip is that there are lots of programs. So if you don't like one program you're using, try another. They're all a little different and they all um, have unique features. <clears throat> Her next tip is to take your time. Um, a friendly reminder that it can take a while to get the hang of doing anything through eye gaze, so art is no different. Uh, she also suggests that AI art is a wonderful tool because all you have to do is type a couple of words to create amazing work, and we'll see some of her really cool AI creations next. And her fifth tip is again, just have fun. Not so serious, I love it. So let's take a look at Amy's work. Uh, this is an artwork that Amy did using Photoshop on Windows with her Toby Eye Tracker. So she created this uh, with drawing through mouse clicks and cursor moves, and it's really beautiful to see. She's layered in text in addition to the drawing. The next slides are Amy's AI artwork that she used a website called pixlr.com. Uh, she told me that she created these artworks by typing into the prompt and then editing the prompt to tweak the images as she saw fit. Uh, so here we have these beautiful works in tense and happy birthday. We have a few more, August, hey. Daisy. Indiana and Cottage. So they're so, so cool to see. And this website was really fun to play around with. I had to check it out myself. Um, in addition to the prompts, you can also then edit the image um, as well. So a really, really cool program. And Amy, thank you so, so much. 
All right. So next up, we have our artist, Scott hey, Craig. Let's, oh, let's go back just a second. There was sure. one thing that you had shared with me about this was that you actually right. can lay this over the top of another picture, or you can actually draw on top of these pictures. Yes. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yes. So you can, um, on this website, you have templates that you can choose from, if, and then you can layer the AI prompt on top of the template. You can upload your own photo and then give the, the website some prompts of what you'd like to change or modify to it. Or you can um, take the AI generated image and then use their software tools to paint over crop images, drag images. Um, so there's tons of features and I think I really only scratched the surface of it, uh, but it's it's really cool. And um, we'll see another AI website up in our third artist spotlight, but there's tons of AI options. It's a really, a really cool way to start. Right. Great. So next we're going on um, to Scott Craig, one of our, our next artists here. So this is a picture that Scott created just for us in this presentation. So thank you so much, Scott, for, for this. I love the colors. So cool to see. Um, so Scott uses a TD pilot with eye tracking and the app he uses is Art Set 4. Um, Scott shared that he's only been using the pilot for about a year and a half. And he this is his first foray into art as well. He's always been a creative type, um, but hasn't taken any formal art classes beyond what you can find on YouTube. Um, Scott says that he likes the art set program because it has an easy to understand description of what every tool does. And so you can make the art as simple or as complicated as you'd like. Um, Scott also shared with us, uh, so because he's using eye tracking on the iPad, he's able to customize within the settings of Apple what options are there. So he was kind enough to share with us what changes he found were helpful for his art. So um, I have two screenshots from his settings here and I've circled what features we'll see. And we're going to see some videos of these in action. So on the left side here, what's called this top level menu, that's what, um, what Scott sees when he opens his assistive touch menu. This is how he tells the cursor to function within the app. So in the top left corner, you'll see there's the dwell is circled. That's how Scott taps and, uh, and kind of like left click or taps with the finger. In the bottom left corner, there's the hold and drag. So you'll see Scott uses this for brush strokes, for making lines. It's a really helpful tool. And then in the bottom right, Scott also has a scroll, which he uses to swipe through the app and select his tools or features. On the right side here, this is also in the assistive touch menu. Scott had told me that he turned off fallback action. So what that means on the um, iPad is that when Scott selects something, like Scott selects hold and drag, that's what he wants his cursor to do. Because fallback op action is off, it's his cursor is going to stay in hold and drag mode until he selects something new. So this allows his uh, his cursor strokes to be more um, fluid and keeps him in the creative mode. So these are two important features that I wanted to point out for people who may be using assistive touch um, as their as their mode. There. So let's take a look at the next slide here. Scott also pointed out which tools he uses in the Art Set app, which is super nice of him and so useful for, for an art novice like me. He uses layers, which help to create different dimension. Layers are kind of like individual transparent sheets. So it helps keep parts of the work separate um, and helps give interesting dimension and texture. Um, he uses the line tool to help him draw straight lines. Nahum asked me to find out how that works. <laughs> and, and so the line tool is really helpful in this. It also lets you draw angles. Um, and there's a circle tool as well. 
he can also change the brush, si brush size and brush opacity to manage um, the thickness and density of his art. So we're gonna see some of this in action. Okay, so here we have our first clip. Um, and what you'll see this green circle flying around as the cursor with Scott's eyes, what he's doing because he's in that fallback action is off, he's in tap mode. So he's just selecting and tapping different features. Now he'll switch to the scroll and he'll navigate through the tools to select. He switches back to tap to make his selection. And he'll pick the oil. Now he's going to pick the color. It's like mesmerizing to watch this in action. Now he's changing the brush size. And now he's going to paint. So he switches to hold and drag to start his brush strokes. And again, that's where this um, staying in this continuous mode is really helpful because he gets to stay and hold and drag and continue to do, to do strokes. Okay, so let's go on. Now I have another clip um, that shows as the painting has progressed, what Scott has done. Um, so here he's at the bottom, this line tool is selected and he's using hold and drag to draw the door. And then you'll see he switches back to tap and he's going to the undo button in the bottom right to, to uh, fix, this, fix the line. Going back to hold and drag. Creating the door. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. Here's the line tool still in action. Now he's going to use the dwell and switch to the circle so that he can add. He can resize the circle. It's a really great trick. And then I'm going to scroll ahead again. Um, so that we can watch how Scott signs his painting. So he's switching the form, changing the brush size, and then we'll use the hold and drag. And then you'll see the circle mode is still enabled. So he's gonna use the tap function to take the, the circle mode off. And now he's back and we'll go back to hold and drag and we'll sign his painting. So I know I always simplified that process. It was Scott shared an amazing video um, with the whole entire process. And he said that I can share that with anybody who's interested. So um, please feel free to drop, drop your email in the chat if you would like to see it. Um, we're happy to share that with you there. So amazing product, beautiful color, so much dimension and texture. It's so cool to see these, both the tools of the application and the tools of the eye tracker in action together. So thank you, Scott, so much for sharing that with us. Awesome. <clears throat> All right. So our next artist here, her name is Stacy Vota, and she shared uh, some tips with us and some videos as well. Um, so the, what Stacy shared with us is before, he, just, I'm sorry, Stacy also, I should back up, uses Art Rage on Windows. She uses Toby Eye Tracker and she uses the TD control mouse function. Um, so Stacy's first tip is before you start, familiarize yourself. She said, you know, take some time, explore the tools that you have to work with. It's okay if you don't understand what menu items are there. Um, playing around with them a little bit will give you some really great background knowledge for when you do get started. 
For next tip, again, I like this theme is just to have fun, have fun and experiment. Um, she said just to start playing with random tools and their settings and see what happens. Two of her earliest experiments have turned out to be two of her favorite works that she has hanging on her walls and they're pictured here. Stacy's third tip is to start small and basic. I love this. She said, Michelangelo's first work wasn't the Sistine Chapel, right? So set yourself up with something simple and achievable. She says to remember that eye gaze itself is not easy, add some time and some patience. So I love those tips here. Um, two of Stacy's earliest works are pictured here. So this tulip on the left was done in with freehand or free eye, as she likes to call it, which I love. And she, for the blue dog photo, she used a, a picture template and then put her spin on it um, with painting and texture. <clears throat> her next tip again is this one of using an image as a guide. She says that using free eye painting is extremely difficult and every glance away from the screen is immediately translated into whatever you're working on. She thinks it's much easier to work from an image and use it as a pattern. We're going to see that in action um, in a minute here. Stacy's next tip is to use layers. She says layers are a great tool to give you more control and apply interesting effects to your work. It allows for more separation and more control. Um, so like I said, we are going to see that in action. And I'm going to um, switch screens for a minute. Stacy was kind enough to record herself using the selection tool in ArtRage over a picture template. So I'm gonna uh, share, my, share that video with you and talk through what she's doing there. So get one second while I switch screens here. All right, I'll pull this up. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit here. So, what Stacy is doing is, um, like I said, she's using a computer control function in Toby Dynavox. She is using a series of left clicks and adjusting targets with the selection tool in ArtRage. She's outlining the eye of the bug, um, which she's then going to paint texture into. This is a picture template that she added into her canvas as a place to start. So there you can see the selection is complete. It's highlighted. She's selecting the color fill tool with a left click, adjusting the target to get right on top of what she wants. And then you're going to see Stacy switch into continuous mode. Her continuous mode goes into hold and drag. And so now she sweeps the cursor across the bug's eye to give the, that paint texture. She pauses to switch out. She's going to close continuous mode, go back to her tools. And now she's selecting a palette knife. Then because she wants to be in continuous mode, she'll and have those uninterrupted strokes, she'll go back, back to hold and drag, moving the cursor across the bug's eye to smooth the texture out. And she's gonna finish that last piece. and see the cursor moving across the eye. She's in hold and drag, then she exits out. Now she's adjusting the zoom and adjusting the layers. So the layers are on the left. You can see she has a yellow wing as one layer. She has the right eye as its own layer, so that allows her to isolate and look at just that work at one time.
going to see her zoom back out again so we can see her change as a whole. She's typing in the value of what she wants to zoom out to. And there you can see. So Stacy also kindly shared this video with us. It's posted on YouTube and Trinity will drop that link into the chat. So that is how Stacy uses the Art Rage program. Um, what's also awesome is that she uses AI as well. So that is what she wanted to share next. Um, so Stacy's final tip is to use AI as a tool. And she, the program that she uses, it's here, D-A-L-L dash E2. I'm totally butchering how to say that, the I do. Um, what she highlights about it is that it can be your arms and legs when you can't go out and take a picture of that subject you really want to paint. You can use it to create a line drawing and you can create unique original works just by telling the generator what you envision. She also highlights that you can then further refine what the um, generator created and edit it in your own art program or the program itself or the AI program itself. So here are some of her works that she's created using AI. Um, this first one is a self portrait. She entered create a photo of a single cornflower, the cornflower representing ALS in an orange modern face representing me on a white table with a white background. This next one is um, about a robot Venus flytrap under a yellow table lamp. And then she edited, edited the image in ArtRage to give it more accents. These last two images, the first is a line drawing from a, of a praying mantis that she asked um, the AI program to create. And then the last one, she entered in the prompt, create a photo of a snake plant in a purple pot on a white floor with a white background. She said that the generator put the plant offset in the frame and she really liked it. And she looks at it as a collaboration with AI. So it's so really cool to see how she uses multiple programs depending on, um, and it seems like everybody does, you know, depending on what, what we're going for. So I love it. Thank you so much, Stacey. Um, one last thing that I just wanted to highlight is that in addition to the art program having unique features, so does your eye tracker and the eye tracking software. So some things that look, seem themes that I've noticed that what are helpful are how to get into a continuous mode with your eye tracker. Um, so for example, in the grid software, which is pictured here, what that sometimes looks like is a double selection of the left click button. And then you stay in left click mode until you until you choose something else. In the bottom photo here, this is again that continuous mode from TD Control that's highlighted. So that's one feature that we may you want to investigate about your program and how that can benefit you when you're creating. The other option is that when you're using an eye tracking program that can be customized, highlight and maybe pull forward the features that are most beneficial to you. So like Scott, for example, put his hold and drag right out on his assistive touch menu, easy to find. Again, in this picture here from the grid software, this, this artist put the drag feature right on their top of their toolbar. And as a reminder, you can have different toolbars and Mount, uh, eye tracking settings for different programs. So this may not look like what you use when you do email and that's okay because that's a different program. So you can have multiple layouts and multiple settings. Um, this is another important time to play around and find what works best for you. Um, and if you need help doing that, we're happy to explain and help kind of sort through some of the programming behind these buttons. Something else that's helpful to know how to do is how to be able to move the eye tracking grid out of your way and, and format it so that it lines up with your program. So the move grid or the dock grid come in handy when you're using a Windows toolbar that's typically along the side or the top of your screen. Um, so those were just a few helpful hints that we wanted to point out. All right, so in summary, thank you so much for sticking with us and joining us with 
joining us for this. Again, Scott, Amy, Stacy, could not have done this without you. You guys are the true experts. I mean, thank you so much. Um, the themes that we found were have fun. I forgot to mention, Scott said he takes a Bob Ross approach and doesn't overthink it. I love that. I think that's a wonderful experiment. Uh, take your time and customize your settings to what works for you. All right, so now we can do some question and answer. I'm going to stop my share. Perfect, Annie. Thank you. Okay, so turn on your cameras, turn on your microphones, ask questions, share what works for you. Let us know what we, what you liked, what would be helpful for you for learning more. Be faces. There's more of you, don't be afraid. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Deborah asked, where can we find this Zoom presentation? We will be sharing this Zoom presentation for you at the very end. I'll send out a follow-up. And then also, um, getting some, there we go. Uh, we will also make sure um, that it will be on our YouTube channel. So if you don't have our YouTube channel, Karina, can you drop our YouTube channel link for us too? And that's Annie's dog <laughs> wanting to join us. Perfect. All right, questions, thoughts? Uh, Trinity and Annie and whoever else. Um, I'm, I mean, as you know, I completed my voice banking many moons ago, but I don't think I'm ready to use it, but I'm really losing almost all control of my hands. Um, and um, can, can these programs be used with say an iPhone or an iPad? Uh, and before you answer that, um, coincidentally, uh, one of our um, one of our group members uh, shared with us uh, a video uh, from Steve's Way and Tom Meadows. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but it was uh, it's essentially a kit that lets you get a lot more out of your existing iPhone um, and maybe iPad, but um, short of getting into a Toby device now when I don't really need it to communicate. Um, I'm dying to do artwork because I have, I've lost the ability to sketch. And my background is I've been drawing for the last 45 years as an architect. But unfortunately, I can barely use my mouse for clicking to do my drawings. And I always wanted to get back into freehand drawing when I retired. Now I can't. But sh again, short of getting into the Toby, can any of these programs work with, um, with, with an iPad, say? Well, there's a, there's a, hold on a second, Nakam. I'm gonna let you jump into this one because I know you have a lot to say, but Jay, I wanna bring you back though to this idea when we're talking about the Toby, I think what Jay is referring to is an eye gaze device, right? right? Right. So yeah, so we did show you a lot about eye gaze, but remember there are other access options other than just eye gaze mm -hmm. that people may use in their journey or maybe in place of. So you should talk to Annie and I about your access to your okay. computer in general, as well as to, and then this same access can be used for art because you still have nice head control. So something like a gyroscopic head mouse would let you do all of those paint mm. strokes that you're wanting to do okay. and being able to make lines. So you have really nice control of your head. So you don't have to use eye gaze right now. Okay. We could be talking to you about head mouse, like a gyroscopic okay. head mouse, like something like the, the QHA, which is okay. spelled Q-U-H-A, QHA, Zono. Well, can I, um, I mean, I, I get a, I get a recurring uh, email from Annie that says I haven't spoken with her in a couple of months. Uh, can I just make an appointment with you guys 
at some time 100%. in the near future and we don't have to bore everybody with all the details here. So Karina, I would like you to know that we did not pay Jay to have this conversation with us. <laughs> Okay. okay. Not I don't know. I don't know where that came from, but so this okay. is perfect because this is what we want. We want people to understand. And that was the biggest goal, Jay, that we had with this whole series is we wanted people to understand you can do more than just communication. And a lot of people also find that the whole idea of using a communication device for just communication is hard for them to take that next step. Right. But doing things that improve your life and bring joy, such as art, is what we're here for mm -hmm. as well. And if you happen to learn to use your communication device that improves your communication in the process, then <laughs> wonderful. We want that without a doubt. Great, great, um, great. So reaching out to us for accessing your device, your communication device is exactly what we're here for. Okay. So that's why I was saying we couldn't have, I absolutely could not have, have Asked you to do a better job at that. Um, right. Catherine, thank you for being our wing lady. You dropped the Kuha Zono into the chat for us, for other people to share. So that was fabulous. Nahum, I know you're dying to say something. I can see it. Go for it. Well, you stole part of it already. So it was good. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that was great. I, this That question was so such a perfect addition to this presentation because the head mouse is another way of using your head to do the drawing, but also on an iPad and an iPhone, being able to use voice control to be able to draw the lines, which would give you even a, a much higher level of accuracy and control. And even taking that a step into a different planet of being able to use eye tracking to speak and then through voice control, draw on an iPad, it opens up so many things. So um, that question really opened up a lot, a lot of good topics, so. So Corey brought up, Corey uh, brought up, is the QHA better than the glass house? So Corey, no, I am not saying one is better than the other. So that's another option as well for kind of head movement in terms of, you know, being able to access as well is glass house. Okay. And, I was just curious um, it, if anybody has had experience where they felt like that was more user friendly. I was trying to look for prices too as we're talking, but the QA, the QA is much more expensive. And I guess we probably wouldn't want to go into details about which products are actually better. But yeah, there are there's lots of pros and cons to both. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jay, for bringing it up as another option. Again, it doesn't just have to be eye gaze. Anybody else with questions or thoughts? Are there tutorials anywhere that can take you through the whole process? That's a good question, Nahum. I, with eye tracking specifically or with just alternative access or? Yeah, I mean, I guess, because since the Eye Gaze Artists <laughs> Facebook group, I mean, there, there are so many people that are doing this. I wonder mm -hmm. if anybody has put together, and if they haven't, I'm sure they'd be, thrilled to do it, to like maybe take one particular program and one access method and. Yeah, I did find a couple trading videos. Um, one was for Rebel and one, the, and that was with an eye tracker with the Toby PCI, um, but not some of, with some of the other programs that I, we um, went through today. Yeah, that's a great that suggestion. Gets, some of that stuff gets complicated. With the, uh, with the uh, layering and so it It does. And I think that was um, such a great point that a couple of our artists brought up to try different programs and to start small and start with simple activities um, so that you don't overwhelm yourself. Because I agree, when you open up some of these art programs, it's like, whoa, where do I even start? What do I do? Um, yeah, so looking- years to get to some of that stuff. Oh, and remember too. remember that, you know, back at the very beginning of the presentation, just kind of to bring you back to that thought is that 
um, remember there are simple, just kind of almost like adult coloring pages as well, where you go and pick the color, you pick the location that you want it to be in so that you've got, got it's, it's, it's very, very error free. Error -free. I kind of forgot where the back goes. So it's very error free in that idea, just starting to get used to having, you know, to looking at your target, going to select your tool, coming back to do your target. Those coloring pages are a great place for you to start in terms of error free, low stress, just figuring out how to work yourself back and forth across the tool and across the page, then you can kind of step up and using these higher levels. Because please remember, if you are an artist and or if you are supporting an artist, this is not just about creating art too. you have the layer of using this brand new technology on top of your art. So if an artist, for example, is right handed, then you would ask them to paint with their left hand. It's a totally new way to, to complete your art. Okay, we have a couple questions in. Um, Catherine, you had some questions about if there are custom built um, or more art specific grid sets that people have created. I did not cruise the online grid sets. Annie, did you? I did. There are some that are created for some of the more um, I like tux paint was one that came up that was I think more maybe uh, children may be using that page set, but I think gives some interesting ideas. Um, but you had they were more uh, related to windows programs in the background than a toolbar specific to that not necessarily a grid set within the software and the Toby yeah. page sets I found that as well on page set central. Okay. Deborah had a question for clarification is the QHA and Glasshouse, are these both head mouse to use for artwork? No, they are not. Dedic they are not dedicated for artwork. They are dedicated for computer access. So the QHA and the Glasshouse both are a way to access your computer that you then can use for creating art. They are very helpful for lots of other things other than just creating art. Charlie said uh, um, that he has seen a few videos, but they are hard to find. Charlie, if you find those videos, if you want to send those to us, please, <laughs> um, we will be happy to share them out when we send out kind of our follow-up email after this session. Um, all right. Catherine said, one thing that came into play with Glasshouse in the past is when I tried it was whether or not someone had was a glasses wearer just because of where the head mouse lies on the face. Okay. Deborah said, uh, Deborah asked a question, where can you find the coloring pages using eye gaze? Annie, do you want to go? Yes. The over I that? Can, sure. So the programs that we mentioned, the look lab is from a company called Smartbox, and the magic eye effects is from a company called Sensory Effects. And those can be downloaded from their websites. They do have a cost associated with them. Um, I can put those links in the chat or email you, Deborah, um, after the presentation. Um, but there's a free trial period for both of those as well. The jacksonpollock.org website is a really fun website. Um, so you would use either the eye tracker, eye tracking um, mouse program or a head mouse program um, to then control the website and it's a really fun cause and effect way to, to play with art um, online. So I'll, I'll send you those links, Deborah, I think, or I can drop them in the chat uh, if everybody would uh, like. That. I have a question, yeah. if I may, about the, the head mouse. You mentioned the head mouse is really a way to access your computer. Um, so for instance, I already have certain programs on my computer like AutoCAD, um, SketchUp, um, which I am, was very facile when I had control of my hands. Um, now, all I figured out how to use is a um, is an on-screen keyboard that I could just hover over. Um, will the head mouse and some associated program allow me to? use all the commands of a, 
a pre-existing program like AutoCAD or SketchUp or something like that that I already have? Yeah, yes, they will. But you're definitely going to be pushing the limits of, you know, AutoCAD pushes the limits of our brains to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so you're just going to be doubly pushing it. But you definitely could could use all of the features because you're getting essentially a very very um, reliable mouse access through a head mouse. Okay. Well, what else do I have to do? So I might as well give it a try. Okay. Thank you. And then please report back because we'll because we'll use you. So that's the big thing I can say. You know, of course, we hope we're you know creating a community of people that are finding and creating art, um, in whatever fashion that looks like for you. Please feel free to share back with us. But then also too, if you feel like you you have this under control and you you figured it out, like Stacy has been kind enough to like allow us to to um you know to let other people learn from her and to kind of pass that over to you know to her to be a mentor. Jay, if you're willing to be an AutoCAD mentor when you figure this out, like we uh, would love that uh, because there's mm -hmm. other people that want to do the same thing. Well, I'll, I'll do my best. I, I make no promises. And then if I do, I'd want the money I paid you back. <laughs> just, just, jo just joking. Just joking. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, a forever money back guarantee. It's, you know, I'm joking. <laughs> Please remember if you're just if you're new to looking if you're just new to Bridging Voice, we are a nonprofit. We provide our services for free. <laughs> and then Trinity, I also just wanted to to pitch again. I've been playing around with a lot of the AI programs, and I'm, I it was really lovely to see that Stacy is using those as well. And that's a really easy place to start too for people who some of them who are looking for like just a, a easy way to dip your feet in. And I was surprised. I loved how Stacy described it as sort of a collaboration with AI, because I was surprised how much I felt like I really was creating and, and, and surprised by, by what was created sort of in uh, in conjunction with AI. So the I, I was using Dolly, I was playing around with this weekend, but um, I think that that's a really fun place to start for people who might not be familiar with some of the more advanced programs. All right, Liz has a question. Has anyone tried a photo editing software beside Photoshop with head mouse or eye gaze? So with alternative access, has anyone tried photo editing with alternative access? Charlie, I'm looking at you. <laughs> How about anyone else? Not sure. Catherine was just put in the chat, you know, the incorporation of AI into the presentation is so incredible. Um, absolutely a great way to dip your toes in and then dive deeper when you're ready. You're you're right, Catherine. I had never even thought about it. And then, you know, um, Annie had kind of brought it up and I was like, yes, what an, you know, an accessible way to get started without feeling like so overwhelmed. I, I don't remember Trinity. I don't remember yeah. who. And I, it's it, within the last two years, I did have one client who was using Photoshop. Um, they were literally editing pictures. I think I remember who it was. And um, and he was, uh, as far as I know, he felt pretty liberated to be able to do it when he was introduced to the eye tracking. And at that time, I don't think he was even using TD control. So. Slightly, Annie, slightly Deborah wanted to know. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Just <laughs> on the photo editing, I thought this might be a nice place to remind people um, about our holiday card editing game that Devora created. So, Devora, if you can wave, Devora's on here. She's our amazing programmer. Last year for the holidays, she created a really lovely program that you can use with your eye tracker to import photos and and you know very lightly edit them um, to create your own holiday cards, and that's for free on our website. Um, I'll drop the link in here. Um, so that's also just a fun place to start. Annie, drop the links, Deborah, for uh, some AI information for you too. 
that, that Stacy had recommended. When we do our follow-up email after this, which is also going to include, you know, like the YouTube link to this too, we will put a list of these of these resources in that follow-up email as well. So please remember, if you can't join us, you're always welcome to sign up and then uh, we will generate a follow-up email that has the link to the YouTube to this YouTube video as well as all of you know important things that kind of came up during our conversation. All right, so just being mindful of time, um, I do want to remind you guys all that our next session is coming up shortly, um, and we are going to be discussing music. So listening and creating to music, which is uh, obviously another art form but just wanted to bring that up to you guys as well. And that is coming up very quickly uh, on the 29th, on the 29th of this month. And again, we will also have some music creators um, that will be joining us for that as well. Um, so if there aren't any other questions, I'm gonna wave goodbye to you all and tell you thank you so very much for joining us today. Uh, and if you have any feedback, please feel free. Oh, Jay. Real, real quick, Trinity. Um, on the last session, I thought I had signed up for all of the subsequent sessions um, while we were still, while the session was still going on. I Everything that I got a, a um, confirmation on other than today was September, October. So I don't, can you resend the link or that invite to the, or get to the music session? I'll, I'll check that out for you, Jay. Okay, th thank you, thank you. And we will be posting them as well. So, okay. um, oh yeah, Karina just put the training for our music training in there as well, but then again, we will give it to as a follow-up. Thank you all for coming today. Oh wait, hold on, wait, important message from Charlie, breaking news. I use software to edit pictures and make videos. I do funeral slideshows on the side. The biggest problem is the computing power of the, hold on a second. Okay. I do funeral slide shows on the side. The biggest problem is the computing power of the Toby isn't very good. You have to use lightweight software. And to be honest with you, not just talking about the Toby, but a lot of the dedicated speech generating devices are not going to be running at as high of power as what you would find on someone's desktop. For that, Liz. Can I ask okay. a question? I know time is urgent here, but <clears throat> so for those of you that are using the Toby or another communication device and doing your art, are you flipping between screens or do you find it easier to like do your art on an iPad and then use your communication device for continuing to speak with your family or for us, we're thinking from a class setting, how difficult that could get. So just interested to see if anybody has any insights on that. Most, most people, it's except for Scott Craig, <laughs> like really can only use one device. I mean, unless somebody is gonna be put, you know, swapping the device in front of them. Scott Craig happens to have a, a, a Windows device and a, an iPad a device and he use, uses both with eye tracking and he turns his head to either one enough where they don't interfere with each other, which is pretty uncommon. But I think normally someone's gonna really be, if they're using one device for their communication, they probably would prefer to be on that device the whole time. Okay. Amy Thornberg just, just dropped in the chat that she does flip back and forth. Okay, perfect, thank you. I am going to stop our recording at this time.